one of the interesting finding from my first project was uh, symbiotic literally decreased the FCR. Mm. So like birds were gaining good weight even after eating like less feed. That's one of the good and like not taking worthy. And after that, it also decreased the intestinal lesion score, which was caused by Imeria maxima. Mm. And when we are like come into the immune cells uh, during the peak challenge period, which was like uh, day 21, I think. Uh, during that time, there was massive increase of inflammatory immune cells. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I'm your host today, Kelly Wamsley, and I'm joined by Bikus Shaw. Hi, Bikus. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. We are going to, so you're currently um, working on your PhD, but we're going to talk about research from your master's program at UGA, right? Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit um, about your project and what you did. Uh, so in my master's, I did two projects. And the first one was I studied the effect of symbiotic supplementation during necrotic enteritis challenge in broilers. And the second one was uh, I compared the efficacy of symbiotic with antibiotic during the necrotic enteritis challenge. Okay, so a little background, symbiotics becoming more popular, but um, maybe a little new to some people out there. So can you um, give me a little bit of background and for were uh, listeners and viewers and as well on symbiotics. So symbiotics are basically a combination of both probiotics as well as prebiotics. And uh, we all know like uh, the supplementing probiotic along with its food can provide us synergistic effects and we can get better outcomes from the symbiotic instead of using uh, prebiotic or probiotic alone. Okay, gotcha. So, and we're talking about including this in the feed. And are there any kind of um, specific types of probiotics and the prebiotics that you're combining together for the symbiotics that you were looking at? For me, I use like four uh, strains of lactobacilli bacteria, and I use fructo oligosaccharide as a prebiotic because FOS is like one of the important prebiotic, which is selectively fermentable by uh, beneficial bacteria. Great. And are, is, did you test products um, or additives um, that are commercially available right now or are they in, in the development phase? Uh, actually, I did the one which is commercially available okay. because I wanted to see how like the commercial thing works and what we can do to improve them. Great. I just want to make sure we have a little bit of background to kind of, you know, so that we can kind of get a little more information and know exactly what you're looking at. And so you looked at broilers and a necrotic enteritis challenge that you induced. And so what ages did you go to? Actually, uh, the broilers are uh, prone to necrotic enteritis uh, during their like second and third weeks of age. So uh, I introduced uh, Imeria maxima, which uh, will act as a predisposing factor for necrotic enteritis. And on day 1920 and 21, that was like three consecutive days, uh, I orally gavaged uh, Prostudium perfringens to induce necrotic enteritis. Okay. And then um, did you do lesion scores or did you observe any high mortality just to kind of see where, what kind of a challenge that you were able to, um, to get? So in my first project, uh, we got subclinical necrotic enteritis. Mm -hmm. But in my second project, we got uh, clinical necrotic enteritis. So what would you say would be the, the biggest um, separation point um, to go from, to classify that as from a subclinical to a clinical necrotic enteritis challenge? So the subclinical infections are the ones in which you don't see uh, much of the like uh, sign and symptoms. Uh, the birds are just lethargic, they are less eating, they are uh, not getting proper weights but you won't see much mortality in subclinical infection. But when it's clinical, you can see heavy mortality and it can like finish up your entire flocks in some cases. 
Okay. And so, um, so when did you introduce the symbiotic treatment um, for the birds? Uh, we introduced it from day one of ACE. And then you looked at typical growth performance and measurements, but then you also um, looked at some immune function um, characteristics, right? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, like uh, we did like multiple parameters. So one was the performance one. Second one was intestinal integrity. Then we looked into the immune cells, which are like the conventional immune cells, CD4 cells, CD8 T cells, and regulatory T cells. Then we also did like in vitro cell culture to see how much nitric oxide are produced by um, macrophages present in the spleen. And then we also looked for several uh, inflammatory and anti-inflammatory cytokines. Yeah, that, so that's really interesting. Cause, and you did that for both projects with the subclinical necrotic enteritis and the, the clinical necrotic enteritis challenge? Yep. Okay, and so what did you find um, in results in looking at all of those different parameters? What were some of your take-homes from that? So the one of the interesting findings from my first project was uh, symbiotic literally decreased the FCR. Mm. So like birds were gaining good weight even after eating like less feed. That's one of the good and like not taking worthy. And after that, it also decreased the intestinal lesion score, which was caused by Imeria maxima. Mm. And when we uh, like come into the immune cells uh, during the peak challenge period, which was like uh, day 21, I think, uh, during that time, there was massive increase of inflammatory immune cells such as CD4 and CD8 T cells. Mm -hmm. And similarly, the uh, concentration of uh, regulatory T cells were very less during the like peak period, such, so that uh, from this we can get that uh, symbiotic is trying its best to clear the infection by increasing the inflammatory response. But as time passes, which is like one week after challenge, we saw there is massive decrease in inflammatory uh, immune cells such as CD4 and CD8 T cells. And there was increase in regulatory T cells, which increased like body is trying to reach in homeostasis state and clear the infection. Similarly, the macrophages which were harvested from the challenge and symbiotic group uh, produced uh, a lot of nitric oxide in vitro which even indicates like macrophage is playing active role in clearing the infection. Yeah. And after that, there was like a rise in several inflammatory cytokines during the peak challenge period and it got reduced and the anti-inflammatory cytokines was increased during the late recovery period. And that was like some of the interesting findings from my first project. Yeah. So, and then how long, um, what, what, at what time points did you take those measurements at? And, and how long did you grow the birds for? We grew the birds for like 35 days and we did the sampling like every week on like seven, 14, 21, 28 and 35. Okay. And so then that benefit that you uh, at least initially saw in feed conversion ratio um, and then some of the, the uh, other associated benefits that you saw with immune function um, of the birds that received symbiotics was that continued through day 35? That, yeah, continued till day 35. Because like if we see some better result in the middle of the like trial, it doesn't make sense because at last in case of poultry, we need performance ultimately. So right. the in, in, in matter most. Yeah. And so the, in the first trial, um, you had a con you had some controls um, or in both trials that we're talking about, you had controls between the, them yes. um, and an antibiotic and then an antibiotic free, uh, no feed additive or no kind of control. Is that right? Uh, in my first trial, yeah, we had all of them. OK. Can you tell us what antibiotic or what type of an antibiotic or anticoxidial that you used? Uh, we used antibiotic. It was Virginia mycin. And so then those birds that were um, receiving an antibiotic, did they, how did they perform um, relatively to the other uh, treatments? Okay. So in my second trial, when I compared the antibiotic with symbiotic, uh, mm -hmm. there was like, I can say both were like same, but antibiotic was like slightly better than symbiotic. Okay. 
in all the parameters except mortality. Okay. So in mortality during the peak challenge periods, uh, in antibiotic group, there was 7% mortality. But in symbiotic group, there was around 35% mortality. Wow. And that was significantly different? Yeah, that was, of course, significantly different. That's like huge difference. And like in the second week, like after one week after challenge, uh, the mortality in antibiotic was still 7%. Mm. But the mortality in symbiotic was only 1%. So from here, uh, what we like get that antibiotic is able to cope with the sudden infection, but symbiotic fails to cope the sudden and heavy infection. So in mortality point of view, uh, we have to make our symbiotic more stronger so that it can resist the sudden and heavy challenges. Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health, leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. And then in the, your second trial, did you also um, take the birds to 35 days? Yep. And then you found, and you use the same symbiotic between both trials? Yep. And so then the impact that you saw from regardless of subclinical and clinical, you found benefit with supplementing this particular symbiotic. Yep. Um, and so then you either had something, you had performance that was similar to an antibiotic or better um, for some metrics. Uh, oh, uh, like, uh, let me be specific, like uh, the both were same. There was not any significant difference. So what I can say when we compare it with the control at the end of the experiment, the antibiotic group had around 120 grams less body weight when compared to control. But in case of symbiotic, it was 180 grams less than the control. So that's not too much difference. But it was a numerical or significant difference. Uh, numerical difference, not significant. Yeah. Okay. And then the um, your control that you're referring to, was that a control of a challenge bird, non-challenge bird, and no feed additive, or what was that control? What I tried in this experiment, I want to replicate some of the like farm. Mm -hmm. What happened in farm? Like we feed them antibiotic or symbiotic from day zero in the feed. And what happens if sudden uh, infection occurs? So there was like just antibiotic, then there was antibiotic plus challenge, and there was symbiotic and symbiotic plus challenge in second uh, trial. But in my first trial, I had like just challenge, uh, the like negative control, positive control uh, with mm. uh, challenge. So it was like distributed between two trials, the, everything. And we, uh, we combined both of the trials, then the complete picture forms. And so when you combine both of the trials, how did that, um, do you mean from, I mean, there's separate trials, but then you're just taking some of the conclusions from the first trial, then what you learned from that one, and then you're applying it into the second one, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Vickis. Appreciate your time today. And thank you so much to our listeners out there. Um, this is another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. We'll catch you next time. Thanks. Bye. Thank you so much, Dr. Ramsley.